Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number 233, the podcast that will not die. My name is Matt, one of your now three hosts with me as always at least for the last few episodes maniacal mags mags how are you i am very good maddie cakes thank you for asking how are you doing i'm great because you're back again which means you clearly can't get enough i can't get enough of you guys this is great well good i i like having the female perspective on our podcast especially on a film that uh, most women probably won't go and watch. So we will see how it you goes. Think? Oh, all right. Mike, how are you today, sir? I notice you're there as well, shirtless as ever. I'm I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Uh, this was a fun one to watch, and uh, we'll have lots to talk about on this one. All right. So Real Film Nerds, episode number 233, The Suicide Squad, not Suicide, suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. Mike, go ahead. Give us the long rundown. <laughs> okay, Matt. Well, this movie was directed by James Gunn, written by James Gunn. And this movie is starring Margot Robbie, Idris Elba, John Cena, Joel Kinnaman, Michael Roker, Viola Davis, uh, Jai Courtney... Falula Borg, Mei-Ling Nog, Pete Davidson, Sean Gunn, Stephen Blackheart. Uh, there's so many people. Uh, it, the list goes on quite a bit. Sylvester Stallone, um, David Dushmanshin. I, I messed that up, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, this movie's about supervillains Harley Quinn, Bloodsport, Peacemaker, and a collection of nutty cons... At Bell Reeve Prison, join the super secret, super shady Task Force X as they dropped off are dropped off at the remote enemy infused island of Corto Maltese. He stumbled a little bit. He's getting better. What do you think, Bags? I definitely think he has improved. Yes. All right, good. good. Over time. Good. So, all right. Uh, you should have just said starring everyone. <laughs> that would have been almost accurate. <laughs> that. That would have been easier, yeah. Everybody's, yeah. All right, so uh, I guess that means we should talk about our first impressions of the new HBO Max movie slash theater movie. Mike, you're going first this time since I always pick on Mags. Okay, so I I, I think it was okay. Just okay? Um, what? Yeah. Jeez. I think it was okay. I... Uh, there's lots of moments in this movie that were really well done, and I like quite a bit. But as a whole co cohesive unit, I felt it was lacking some stuff with the story. I don't know. It, was, it seemed a little all over the place to me, man. That's you know, first impression. Was it a big unit? <laughs> Medium-sized unit. Medium-sized unit. All right. Got it. Got it. Not like Randy Johnson. All right. Mags, your turn. What do you think? Um, I had very similar first impressions to Mike. Um, it was a decent movie. It was there were a lot of cool effects, a lot of great actors, but it all comes back to the story, Matt. You know, we you've talked about that many times on this pod before. It's it the story for me was kind of all over the place. I remember was kind of knitting my brows in confusion and looking over at Mike and being like, what is even, what is going on right now? What, where's this, where's this going? Um, and I mean, yeah, it kind of knitted itself together throughout it, at the end, but I don't know. It just wasn't, I guess, I guess I'm spoiled now because of the MCU and you know, that caliber of movie and script and all of that. And, this just this wasn't that, and I know it's not intended to be that, but I think that's just because it's what I'm used to now. So, now, do you think it's the story itself, or the way they presented the story, where they started in kind of the middle and then jumped back, and then they would do another scene in the middle and then kind of jump back and explain again? Mm, I I 
maybe a little bit of the jumping around, but I really think, because I've watched other movies before where it jumps around and it was fine. Um, I think it was just the story itself was a little, meh. I mean, it was all right. It, it made for an entertaining movie, but there was very little character development. I mean, they, they Game of Thrones everybody and just like axed him in the first 15 minutes of the movie. It was kind of funny. No spoilers. Man. Oh God. Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. <alert. laughs> novice mistake. Novice mistake. That's it. She's out. Don't be Mike, mean. Get another one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that that's that's it? That's that's where we draw the line. No, because okay. I'm sure. I'm out. Bye, guys. I'm sure I have spoiled my fair share of movies before the spoiler section. But uh, yes, they definitely X forced everyone right at the start of the Suicide Squad. Is the way mm-hmm. I described it. Mm-hmm. We don't, we don't have to get into whom yet. That's no. that's a little bit more spoily. It's only kind of spoily now. Yeah, it was everybody. <laughs> it only, we it only half freaks. It's like. It's like the chicken that's like two days bad, and you're like, eh, it kind of smells, but maybe if I rinse it off, it's okay. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I liked it. I thought this movie was a blast. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was absolutely ridiculous, and that's what the Suicide Squad is supposed to be. Well, I mean, man, I'm, I'm not. The, to me, there were a lot of great moments in this movie that were really funny and, and good and went perfect. But there's other parts that just seemed kind of odd and just strewn together i i I don't know we'll we'll get into it we'll talk about it more in the spoiler section yes in the spoiler section (laughs) of the of the podcast and uh i guess to help uh, help it along to get there um (laughs) matt uh what 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 are you drinking uh this this fine morning evening afternoon (sighs) ah I guess that's all the times of day. You forgot lunch. Or or brunch. Elevensies. Elevensies. I like that. Uh, Mike, I am drinking a beer that is in my fridge from Grand Canyon Brewing Company, a place you frequented, I'm, th- I'm sure you have, when you were here in northern Arizona. I'm drinking the Kachina Throwback Ale. Nice. Nice. I don't think I've ever been there, actually. Oh. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, trying to see if there's an address on this can, but yeah, Williams, Arizona. That's probably why you didn't go there. It's a little farther away. Oh, yeah. I didn't really go to Williams, but it was close by. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Matt. So once again, I'm drinking another hoppy beer. This one's called Hopsecutioner. And uh, it's got six different hops in it. It's ridiculous. That's way too many hops. That's way too <laughs> bitter. Well, that's six kinds, yeah. And um, it's uh, from a brewery called uh, Terrapin, and they're out of uh, Athens, Georgia. Megs, are we uh, enjoying iced water today, changing it up, or just regular water? Yes, ice water. Can you hear my... Ice clinking in the glass. I can. Is that a Batman mug too? No, it is not. It is a Unicorns Are Real mug with a rhino on it that I got as a pre- present, for, as a wedding gift. It was nice from hubby over here. I, I remember. I remember mm-hmm. very mu- well. Yes. Wait, I was the one that had to deliver it too, I think. Yes, you did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there you go, dude. I don't know. I was pretty drunk. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drinking all my bourbon. <laughs> and that's the last time I've ever had that bourbon touch these lips. Mm. I'm very disappointed. I've tried so hard to find a freaking bottle of Blanton's. I can't even tell you. <sighs> Anyways. Okay, so now the most important part of the podcast. Maniacal Mags. Mm. How does the Suicide Squad relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, 
Matt, I, I think that the question is more how doesn't it relate to the Marvel I, Cinematic Universe? I was Universe? just going to say the exact same thing. I mean, who who didn't star in or at least experience something? Uh, you know, Idris Alba. He hasn't been in the MCU yet. So there you go. I got it for you. Um, I'm sorry, Matt. Oh, no. But was he in oh something? Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay. So this is this is where I get to gloat. This John is funny. Cena, Margot so Robbie. So I, uh, <laughs> I watched the preview. If you remember from last week's podcast, I'm like, I saw a preview. I think if it's the right movie, I know the MCU tie-in. And it was Idris Elba, who is... Um, not just Bloodsport here. Is it Bloodsport? Is that his name? Yeah, Bloodsport. Bloodsport. Is- but he's 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 Heimdall, man. He is the gatekeeper. Oh, God, now I feel like an idiot. Of course he's yeah. Heimdall. Yeah. And Mike said the same thing last night. Ugh. Dude, it's the eyes, man. <laughs> it is. If they're it's not it. yellow eyes, I can't see it. I can't, can't it. believe you guys didn't get him. He's the first one. Uh, he was really the only one until I started watching the movie. And then I was like, oh, there's one. There's one. So I counted six. What um, also throws me off is the long I hair, could... you know. Sure. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Uh, James well, Gunn. So is that was one. the first one. Oh yeah. yeah, James Gunn. We've got um, Michael Ro- uh, Rooker. Yep. I don't know. Now I'm looking. Now I'm doing the the thing where I have to look at the phone for all the names and stuff. Um. Yeah. We had um, we had Stallone. He was in the MCU. Um. Uh, Waika Natiti is that his no? Taika Waititi. Taika Taika yeah. Waititi. Yeah, I said it right last night. I don't know yeah, why I couldn't did. get it tonight. Um, yeah, he was in it. I mean, he directed one of the yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy movies. No, 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 Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. Okay. And Love um, and Thunder that's coming. Oh, but that's yeah. not out yet. No. And um, I don't know. There's a couple more. There's there's a lot of them. Yeah. There's there's Sean Gunn. Um, there's 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 so many, Matt. It's it's kind of What's ridiculous. What's the guy? The guy who oh, that da- guy. David uh, Das Malshin, the polka dot man. He yes. was also an Ant Man. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. There's just just like it seems like every character was somehow related. Yeah, it was impressive <laughs> the number of of um, of MCU actors, and this is that's just actors. I mean, we didn't have to dig deep at all. Uh, to find an MCU tie-in for this particular movie. Yeah, M- Michaela Hoover, another one. She was in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, mm, I'm trying to I remember the I name. I don't have her name. I don't remember her name. But the chick that plays the in Guardians of the Galaxy, the ones with the one with the antenna. That like oh, Mantis. Yes. Mantis. She was in this? Yes, she was in this as well. She has a small oh. part, but she was in it. Okay. I don't remember I her, I, her name. I guess though. I missed her. Oh. I don't know. Um I don't remember seeing her. Uh, I'm trying to find out, but yeah. It's a lot of people. Lots of people. That's the moral of cast. the story. Well, that's the I mean, it's James Gunn and you know James Gunn likes to work with certain people and hire certain people and that's what we got. <laughs> and he's mm-hmm. very much in the MCU. Uh he's doing the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie, you know. It's like when you watch an Adam Sandler movie, you're pretty much guaranteed to have like five or six of the same actors that he's been working with for ever. Yeah, or um <clears throat> um Gary Marshall does that a lot with his movies. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, uh, I can't think of his name, Edward Scissorhands. Uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton has worked with like Johnny Depp on like almost all of his movies. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Well, I, people just have their particular actors that they really like, I guess. Yeah. God, I really wish I knew her name. I'm sitting here like looking as fast as I can, but. Silently. Good job, man. Well, I know I can't type on my keyboard. It makes all these clicky noises. <laughs> so that's okay if anybody wants to know they can google it themselves yeah they everybody else can go to imdb too okay so that means we're now officially in the spoiler section which is probably good because we didn't make it very long before we spoiled something and it's definitely a difficult movie not to spoil because they x-forced everyone everybody freaking dies like right <laughs> off the bat it was awesome 
That's immediately what I thought of. I was like, is Deadpool going to drop out of the sky now? That would have been hilarious. So, <laughs> Matt, uh, now that we're in the spoiler zone, what did you think about the detachable arm guy? That was absolutely hilarious. Absolutely <laughs> hilarious. TDK, <laughs> the detachable kid. Oh man, it was it was ridiculous when he when the arms just flew over and just started slapping people. Well, and you saw who played him, right? Yeah, I did. Well, just right before, I didn't realize until tonight. Yeah, a big named him. actor. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that was funny, man. Yeah, yeah Nathan Fillion. The detachable kid, hilarious. And then they start shooting up his arms. They're nowhere near him, and he's just lying there, like, <laughs> so good, so good. Oh, I have to, I have to say this: when that part started, and Margot Robbie yells, uh, "What the fuck?" I yelled it literally two seconds before her, and then she said, "Yell, what the fuck?" And it made me laugh even harder. <laughs> Because <laughs> she thought the same thing. That was it's pretty a very good. Very genuine response, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I was a little disappointed. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more Michael Rooker instead of him, you know, bailing and jumping back in the river and get or the ocean and getting his head blown off. But is what it is. It was uh, a, a big, a big separation from you know the badassery that we saw see from him in most roles that he plays. And then all of a sudden, he he gets a little, a little rattled. Yeah, rattled. That's a great way to put it. He gets rattled and tries to get away. <laughs> it doesn't make it far. Well, one of the arguments that uh, James Gunn had or was using is that his character is basically almost identical to um, the t- our two main characters, Bloodsport and Peacemaker. And they all have like the same powers and they all do the same things. And he thought, well, I might as well get rid of one of them since we have two that are the exact same. And they're not going to get rid of Peacemaker because I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but there is a big show coming starring John Cena as Peacemaker in January or December or something. I was not aware of that. Not aware. Not aware. Yep. So that's why there's the little after credit scene showing that he's still alive. I was going to ask you if you watched that. Yep. And then uh, Weasel. That was fun. Weasel lived through all after all that. That was just. That was one mm-hmm. of the funniest parts. They didn't even check to see if the weasel could swim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just screaming and flailing. and <laughs> It was pretty funny. So yeah. good. Uh, did you see who played weasel? The weasel? No. Oh, Sean it's... Gunn did the... Yeah. Yeah, did the um, green... He was in Ma- it twice. Yeah, he was the green guy. Uh, what whatever they do, call him, the CGI screen and green screen. Yeah, well, they have like this green suit they wear for mm-hmm. the mocap with the little ping pong balls on yeah. it. Yes, yeah. For he, the so he yep. he did uh, also in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy as Rocket Raccoon. If you ever see it when he's like doing it, it's so funny. He's like on his knees, <laughs> so everybody gets like this the sight line right. It's pretty funny, but that's cool. Um, I have to say. My favorite scene of the whole movie, I mean, other than the absurdity of a kaiju, was uh, um, Margot Robbie's when she's breaking out of the prison. Yes. And it was so cool because I don't know if people understood it. Some viewers might have, some not. But basically, when she's beating the shit out of these guys and there's flowers and fireworks and all this stuff going off... That's what she sees. So you're kind of seeing it from her eyes as she's beating the hell out of these guys. And I just thought it was very creative and very cool. I didn't know that's why. I just figured it's because, you know, she's going crazy and it's just a fun effect. But that's good to know because it was Mike was a little confused by it, I think. I was a little confused. I wasn't sure if it was the staff, like because she had that whatever the the javelin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know if it was like something to do with that or what. But uh, that that was a great scene. But um, I think my favorite scene was when they are going into this village to go rescue uh, oh, no. the, the the one guy, and they have like a a murder off, and and then they're like, "Hey, these are the good guys," and they're like, oh. yeah. well, they were the good guys." That was good. <laughs> and, and then they just blow know. it off. They're like, oh, okay, well, we'll go help you now. You just murdered my entire, like, family. <laughs> I don't know. I think you guys liked that scene because there was full-on dong. 
You saw a dong. For oh like yeah, there, there there was. Matt, second. did you did you catch the the flaccid penis? They're like that's that's it's making a comeback. You know, I don't look for it like you do, Mike. I know you seek it out. <laughs> so I, I I was looking away during that scene. Oh man. My- <laughs> okay. All right. No, that, that's fine, Matt. <laughs> I think my favorite character in this movie was um, Harley Quinn, was Margot Robbie's character. And I don't know if that's because of, you know, I liked her character from the last Suicide Squad movie, not the Suicide Squad, but just Mm -hmm. Suicide Squad. Got to know her a little bit. So there was more character, character development already in my head about her. But I mean, that character is just great. She's, there's just, she doesn't have any cares about anything happening to her like fear wise she just whatever although i will say again this goes back to the story it's kind of odd how she's on the beach and everybody's shooting at her and trying to kill everybody you know all of the, the people invading the beach and uh somehow she survives okay that's great and then the president guy is like oh i love you you're the most awesome i've admired you from afar i'm like dude you were just she would have been killed. It's not like, how I don't know. I just thought that was a weird convenience in the story. Yeah, well, I think it's just because the dude that told the army that this crew was coming, they didn't say who it was, and she was like the last one to jump on the plane to. And, but still, I don't know. That's me just making up thoughts in my head for it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, it's fine. Um uh matt did you did you like uh peacemakers uh i i thought his character was pretty fun oh yeah peacemaker was great he was he was a lot of fun and john cena played him perfectly uh he's just he's unwavering patriotism Uh, just hilarious and that's one thing that's interesting to think about if you look over the whole film yes the kaiju is the enemy but it's not the big bad of the movie. If you think about it, the big bad of the movie is actually the U.S. government. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, you're right. So, theoretically, the Peacemaker is a villain. I mean, they're all technically villains at Suicide Ooh. Squad, but... Yeah. yeah. Of yeah. this movie. I mean, yeah. Um, Matt, I loved, uh, I loved King Shark. He oh. was... Uh, he was so fun. I'm shocked he wasn't your favorite character. Oh, he he was good. He was good. I really liked the CGI too. I thought they did pretty good. I mean, with the shark like walking <laughs> around, and doing things, and talking and stuff. Uh, and when he was eating people, spot on. Num nums. Oh, I I loved it. I, all, King all Shark was num-nums. awesome. I thought he was so funny. Just he was so funny. And then at the end, there's all these bodies just lying on the ground, and he's like, num num. They're like, no. He just keeps asking. He's like, that num num? No. It was just hilarious. He was like a four year old, like trapped in a shark's body. I loved it. Just so funny. It was, he couldn't die either. Like, they shot him a lot in that movie. Well, I, a I lot. think his like skin is bulletproof. But if you looked, the little alien squid thingies were tearing him up. Yeah. Like, they were really oh, yeah. tearing him up. Yeah, they were. They were. But yeah, I was worried for him. I was worried. I, I thought he, we were going to lose King Shark because you know the opening scene. But um, no, he he made it. He persevered through, and that was good. That was great. <laughs> I uh, I want to ask. I guess since neither of you picked out the Heimdall um, character from MCU, you probably didn't get the irony. But of uh, the um, the name of the secret facility where they were keeping the big giant starfish alien thing um, was Jodenheim. Right. From Thor. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that that was pretty funny. Like ironic that Heimdall is breaking into Jodenheim. Well, and what's, what's really interesting is that it was a former Nazi facility that the U.S. government took over. And so I think the name comes from when the Nazis were using it, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. And that's that's cool. I just thought it was funny. Yeah, there was related like, another the one. The gatekeeper now has to break into whatever. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it was only funny to me. 
what did you think about uh, Heimdall falling through multiple floors of <laughs> all, all uh, what is okay you said it last last time you have to hit the I believe button oh yeah. right I mean there's a lot of that it's, it's a giant starfish you know Godzilla-ing a, a, an entire city so there's suspension of disbelief there but um what do you think um I thought it was fine at this point in the movie it was great it was it was funny it, it just added to the story the I mean ridiculousness of this movie is is pretty awesome it just I don't know some of the story stuff man I, I don't know just seemed a little weird to me just didn't quite gel together you know this this movie did remind me a lot of of the boys um the the show on Amazon which I love a lot and um so I don't know like it just seems it seemed violent sometimes to be just funny and like just ridiculous and and just nonsensical um I don't know well, historically, I'm not much of a DC person, but historically, that's what the Suicide Squad is. That's why the first movie was, it was good, but not as good as this one, because like no one really dies. And this one, like you're, they're literally taking the low level villains and criminals and like throwing them at people to die, basically, is what they do. And that's, you know, that's why they're getting a little bit more spot on in this film, if you ask me. But uh, I, I see the relationship to the boys. If you really want a, a nice shocker, uh, go read the graphic novels of the boys. They make the show look tame. Wow. That's uh, that's some... Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're losing Mike. Mags, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> She's Better awake. Mike, She's doing well. All right. I am awake. So yes. uh, I guess since we're plugging along quickly... I should ask this. Would you recommend folks to go check this out? I think uh, if if like a, it's <laughs> a sort of MCU-ish movie with, that's a lot more ridiculous and a lot more gory and less serious sounds appealing, then yeah, absolutely. Go for it. I mean, it's not it's not trying to be something more amazing than it is. It's a bunch of villains doing crazy stupid stuff and you know it's it's worth a watch mike uh yeah so i think this is you know a fun uh you know popcorn flick whether you're streaming it off of hbo max or you're going to the theater i think this is a fun one to watch it is rated r it's it's very rated r but it's a hard r right mike (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's a hard R. A, R, R, R. a lot of gore. Um, a lot of gore. But if you're okay with that, you uh, you don't even have to like anything about the DC universe. You don't even have to know it's a DC universe movie. It's it'll stand on its own. It's just some guys going to do some stuff and mayhem ensues. Well, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was exactly what I wanted. The story is absurd and all over the place. Uh, For those of you who do not know, the big starfish character is a character from the comics. Uh, I didn't know that. I looked it up, and I thought they just were being random. And no, it is a character that's been in the DC Universe for like 50 years. Um, I have to say another thing. Best use of Pete Davidson I've ever seen. I really don't like that guy. I really don't like his acting. He got shot in the face right off the bat. It was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> They're both nodding their heads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matt. I mean, great. So, all right. Well, I guess we need to do our reels. Who would like to go first? We'll flip the three-sided coin. How about you go first oh, this time? Matt? I go first. Oh, because yeah. I'm going to have the highest rating. I got it. So, I like I said, I enjoyed it. I got what I wanted. Uh, I think James Gunn did a great job. I give it four out of five. I really enjoyed it. Ooh. All right. Wow. Well, all right. Four. Four out of five. So, so this is what it takes to get Matt 
going. You just have to watch uh, super uh, gory, um, ridiculous movie, and he's he's game. So, Matt, you should these horror movies. You should be feeling very good about Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's coming up. (laughs) Part eleven. Part eleven. Ugh. Jeez. All right, Mike, Mike your how turn. about you? Oh, okay. So, um, you know, like I said, this is a great popcorn movie. I don't think I liked it. I know I didn't like it as much as you did, Matt, but I'm going to give it a three reels out of five. Um, it was it was fun uh, for the most part. Just, I don't know. I didn't feel that something. So, didn't have that je ne sais quoi. <laughs> wow. He, sure, he can say that, but he can't pronounce people's names. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that comes to me. So I've been going kind of back and forth about this. Last night, at one point, I was like, I'm going to give this thing two reels. Wow. But um, I kind of came up from there. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it three because it's it's not a terrible movie, um, I just, I really didn't care for the story. The story, I would have given it a two or a two and a half, but just because of the fun of the, the characters themselves, the comedy in it, um, the gore just for the, the, <laughs> for the sake of being gory and being ridiculous. Um, you know, it, it's a fun movie to watch. So I'll give it three, but it was close to a two and a half. So it's like a 2.75 if you can do it, but we don't do that. Right, yeah, we don't do that here, so I'll go a little more on the generous side. Okay, all right, all right. Well, you are married to Mike, so you went real je- je- really, really generous. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. There we go. I got it out. It took a minute. Okay, speaking of generosity. <laughs> what, what does that mean, man? Nothing. I don't, I don't get it. I, I have okay. no idea. <laughs> okay, yeah, take a drink. Take a drink. Relax. Uh, I'm parched, thirsty, you know, <laughs> all this talking. I got to... Wet my whistle. All right, so movie for next week. It's Mike's, Mike's pick. He picked basically the movie I would have picked too. Mike, uh, what are we watching? We're watching Free Guy starring Van Wilder <laughs> or um, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I thought of his character name first. Not even Deadpool. Green, just- Green Lantern. Van Wilder. Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, Van Wilder, man. Like, I don't know. I feel like that's his breakout role. It kind of was, yeah. But, I mean, there was also um, uh, Waiting. He was pretty big in Waiting. That was fun. He was, but I think I feel that was after it, wasn't it? No, I thought it was before Van Wilder. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we'll have to, I'll have to check on the internet, but for now... We'll just call him Deadpool, I guess. <laughs> you can call him whatever you want, Mike. The guy who owns some cell phone network called Mint Wireless. Well, and then he used to own Gin. What the hell doesn't he own? I don't know. Your future ex-wife, Scarlett Johansson? Well, yeah, because they got divorced. So, see, we have something in common. <laughs> so, me and, me and Deadpool, you know, we should be friends. You have something that will be in common? Eventually. You mean? I might be dead by the time it happens. Jeez. Maybe we'll meet up in like a, my retirement home, you know, because that'll level the playing field right there. I'm like 85. Maybe she'll retire to like Sedona. Nice retirement homes there, right? <laughs> Max is like, I what? I don't know. Man. I don't know if there are nice retirement homes there, but I mean, uh, you know, Sedona's very pretty and it's very nice. It's all about that vortex. Okay, so we're losing Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it is all about that vortex. And 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 the saunas, right? Or whatever the sweat thing, sweat sweat lodges. Yeah, the sweat lodges, know. yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think they might have outlawed those after all those people died. It's probably a good <laughs> idea to do that. Probably. So or or regulate it maybe t- perhaps just a little. Yeah, I I I I concur. I think that would be smart. So, 
Okay. Well, this is really going off the rails. So next week. Free guy. Only in theaters. Ryan Reynolds, video game based movie. Yeah, it looks fun. I mean, this is his second movie this summer because he was the hitman's bodyguard's wife. Correct. He was he was starring in that. So I think this is just some of that backlog. Uh, I'm not sure when what order these movies actually were going to come out. But I mean, we got with John Cena in this movie. He was also in F9. I mean, the the key on the keyboard that doesn't stop giving, you know, like it's just it's great. I wish it would, though. I really wish it would. <laughs> we really don't need any more of those movies. We really don't. <laughs> I know. Uh, we actually can only have three more. We can only have F10, F11, or F12. Otherwise, we run out of keys in the keyboard. Well, where the hell are they going to go next? Mars? They already went to space. Yep. And they're going to have Elon send them to Mars. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they're they probably going to have to go to Mars because they already went in submarines, too. I mean, they've already... It, I think they've used stealth planes, drones. I mean, there's nothing left. There's nowhere else to go. You know, oh, that's, Matt, they could do a rail gun. A rail gun. Bam. They could do a rail gun in a VW bus to Mars instead of a Fiero. Sounds good. It sounds good. Yeah. We'll we'll rail gun that VW out to Mars. I love how you guys revert back to talking about movies you dislike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike uh, loves the Fast and Furious series. Funny. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I can tell. He, yep. Both I definitely do. do. Yes. He has all of them on Blu-ray. I'm serious. He loves those movies. I refuse to watch them after the Tokyo Drift one. And then we had we went and watched Hobbs and Shaw for the podcast. And I was like, all right, I have no clue. So I sat down and they had all of them going on USA. So I recorded them on the DVR and watched them. That was a mm-hmm. bad idea. That was way too much Fast and Furious. I watched one a night until I got through all of them. I was just like, God, this is terrible. Why did I do this to myself? And yet you watched them, Matt. You watched them. So there must have been a little part of you. I felt left out. You know, like, like I was uh-huh. missing out on something. Mike was saying. I haven't watched them. I feel okay. How I'm great, doing all right. You know, they are. So <laughs> I, I can't let Mike live that world without. You know, me seeing the the F F series. Yeah. Um, you know, Matt, I just wanted to make sure that you really knew what family was all about. Cars. Oh good lord. Can we wrap this up? <laughs> it's about This is not the Fast about, and Furious all right. re, rehash two point oh. Okay, all right, all right, all right. It's about we're, cars we're, we're moving and on. going to space and drinking coronas and and barbecuing. And <sighs> Southern California. I, tr- I, I think that's it. Listeners, I tried. I tried <laughs> to wrap them up. I did. You heard it. Okay, Matt. We're we're gonna do free guy. Um yeah, I think that's gonna be fun. I think it'll be very fun. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, you know, next week it'll be me and Mags talking about free guy. So <laughs> <laughs> If I can get unchained for long enough to make it to the theater, I think that sounds great. Mike, what are you doing to this poor woman? <laughs> uh, well, Matt, that's a discussion for outside of the pod. <laughs> Clearly. I mean, chains? I don't even want to know. <sighs> I don't even want to know. All right. Then don't ask. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to let Mike go ahead and take us out of here. How's that? All right. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Make sure to follow us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and go out there and stream a movie or watch a movie in the theater if you feel comfortable. Um, the theaters would appreciate it. And uh, catch us next week for our, our pod about Free Guy. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Born ready, like Robin Williams. No, that's born on the 4th of July. Sorry. No, that's Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Vietnam. Good there morning, we go. Good morning, Cinco Cities. We've got Matt Hinch on studio on Magic 99.1. How you doing, Maddie? Uh, I'm here. I'm present. I'm kind of awake. <laughs> You're pretty much the same as you are every week.
Just no, saying. No, it's worse this week. You came in with guns ablazing about your mom calling BS on my trivia question this on morning. The, on the cheeseburgers, <laughs> yep, yep. You said that she never served a cheeseburger in the 13 well, years she was. She didn't serve one, not serve one. She worked in a school. Oh, she worked in she a school. She was a teacher. Okay. But she never had one. Had she always had to eat the chicken nuggets, which she said tasted like cardboard. Oh, I bet. I bet. But you know what? That's that's uh, That was then and this is now. Well, yeah, it was years, <laughs> it was years ago. And it was also, you know, not the world's best school district because it's oh. the one that educated me. I mean, how right. good can they yeah. be? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was what, Sierra Vista? School? Yeah, yeah. Unified school? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So anyway, you're here to talk movies, not trivia. And we had an idea and we need to talk to Ma Hinshaw about this because we think that she should see the same movie that you see and then we should talk to her after we talk to you and see what she thinks about the movie. I'm down for it. We just got to yeah. get her to the theaters. That's we got to the get part. Ma yeah. Hinshaw to watch the movie. Now, I wonder what she would have thought about Suicide Squad. Well, she said she's going to see it this week, oh, which is. doesn't help. That's after right. the fact. Right. Okay. We're going to have to sync this up. But what yeah. did you think about Suicide Squad? I loved it. You loved it. I, I had two it. people call in this morning and they both loved it too. It was a both lot guys, of fun. Both guys, by the way. Yeah. It's to be expected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of the Marvel movies nope. done by James Gunn. None of them. Not one single Marvel movie. I'm sorry. Not one DC movie. Barely even any superhero movies. I would like to say that I'm shocked, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> so James Gunn did uh, two of the best Marvel movies out there, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. Okay. He likes to throw a lot of comedy into his films. Mm-hmm. This is the film he got brought on to do after Marvel quote unquote fired him and then brought him back. Okay. He had to finish this film before Marvel could bring him back for the next Guardians movie. Okay. And so there and, will be another Guardians oh, yeah. movie. Yep, definitely. Oh thank God. I know you were concerned. <laughs> you were worried. Another movie you're not gonna see, right, obviously. Right, right. Yeah. But uh, I, I loved Suicide Squad. The first one was not great. This one kind of falls as like a sequel. There's some characters with the same actors that are the same from the original in this. Um, it's kind of a gray area where it is because it's kind of its own thing. But it's very much more in line of a Marvel movie because of James Gunn okay. than it is a DC movie. It's funny. It's really violent. It's really over the top. Yeah. I just, it's exactly what I wanted out of a Suicide <laughs> Squad movie because right. I mean, it's called the Suicide Squad because everybody dies. Yeah. So it lives up to its name. It's okay. wonderful. So oh, this is a great review. You almost make me want to see it. You would hate it because it's full it. of action and, and, and yeah. death. Yeah. Death. Yeah. yeah. So one thing I do have to say is Margot Robbie in the first one, she's the one that plays Harley Quinn. Yes. She is like the main focus of like the first one and she's been like the main focus of all of them and she did such a killer job in the first one they gave her her own movie and kept doing things with right. her. In this, she has about the same amount of screen time as everyone else. It's a lot more even keel. You get to learn a lot more about the other characters. It was, I mean, he just, he did it really well. Nice. Really, really well. I can't wait to hear how many reels you're going to give it. Oh, I 4. give 5 it. 4.5 out of 5. Uh, close. Close. <laughs> 4 out of 5. 4 out of 5, yeah. Nice. 4 out of 5, yeah. Very good. Well, you're not alone. Everybody's raving. Rotten Tomatoes, 92%. IMDb, 7.6. Metacritic, 74. Uh, overall, Google, Google users, 87% yeah. like this movie. So It's, it's just ridiculous. And it's I don't ridiculous think that you would fun. go to this kind of movie if you didn't like this kind of movie. So I'm not right. surprised with the high ratings. Yeah. If yeah. you don't, if you're not into, you know, superheroes or super villains actually yeah and you're not into super fantasy because it's i mean i don't want to ruin it but there's a lot of fantastical things going on in yeah, this movie and sure. it's it's just fun because it's ridiculous nice very good okay what movie are you and ma hinshaw gonna review next week she has been anticipating this one yes because it has her boyfriend in it oh which one uh, free guy with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yep. you gotta love Ryan Reynolds. Yep. Okay, see if we can get Ma Hinshaw on board to see that movie this week. You know, not the Suicide Squad, or in addition to, so that you can both review it next week. Yeah, I think this would be a in. lot of fun. She needs to call in. It'd be a lot of fun. Okay, yep. let's see if we can make that happen. I, I, I will work on it. All I will right. do the best I can. All right, very good. Matt Hinshaw, guys, check out his podcast. It's called The Real Film Nerds. As always, it's been a pleasure chatting with you on what station? The Magnificent Magic 99.1. Well done.
Good morning, Magic 99.1. Who's this? Guess what? I made it. It's Ma Hinshaw on the line. Yes. Matt's mom. <laughs> How are you doing? Fine, but I don't need to have a smartphone. I'm not smart enough. <laughs> <laughs> the, the phone is smarter than you is what you're saying, well, Ma? Well, you know what? That's the case with a lot of us. Don't you worry about that. What do you think of my idea well, about you reviewing movies um, along with Matt? What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, I would like to hear your take on the movies that Matt reviews. Oh, well, sometimes, yes. But, you know, my husband doesn't like to go to movies, so it's hard for me to go. And <laughs> right. some of them I could review. Yeah, like I went, I got him to go to Jungle Cruise, and he had a wonderful nap. <laughs> <laughs> I relate to that. <laughs> I fall asleep you at know. movies. Yes, yes. But did you like Jungle Cruise? I liked it, but it was too doggone long. Uh, that's what oh Matt said the heaven. same thing. Yeah, they got to make movies uh, under two hours, right? Especially not that I think a kid under 12 would enjoy it. But, you know, uh, I don't see getting kids to sit still that long. Right. <laughs> right. Horrible, horrible. Yes. But I... My grandson's going to take me to see Suicide Squad. He said he would, he promised. Oh, so my gosh. So he's going to be in town from NAU, so yippee. Well, that will be fun. <laughs> Tell me, do you like the Marvel, Marvel movies and the DC movies? Yes, I do. Now, I don't remember as much as I should, but, yeah, I go to them okay. and I watch them. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you see them this week, we want to hear from you next week, and you can tell us what you thought, all right? Well, okay. If Matt's <laughs> there. Matt oh. will be here. Okay. Matt will be here. If you can figure out how to work your phone. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, I only, I'm only married to an engineer, but what do I know? I love it. <laughs> I love it. You are just precious. Precious Ma Hinshaw. Thanks for chatting with us this morning on the radio. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Aw, oh, your mom couldn't be any cuter, Maddie. Can I have her? Yes. Okay. I'll move her in next week. <laughs>